Friday, October 11th, 2019 is just another day at work for most of the employees at the Union Pacific Railroad Yard in West Colton, California. But for the general public, it's the second of two days on display for the new superstar of the Union Pacific Steam Program, Big Boy Number 4014, which is making its first visit to the state of California since its return to service earlier in the year. The locomotive is visiting Southern California for the next few days to pull a two-day round-trip excursion over Cajon Pass to Barstow and return to benefit the Rail Giants Museum in Pomona, where the locomotive resided from 1962 to 2013, as part of its great race across the Southwest. This will be the third and final trip for the locomotive in 2019. Here you can see Union Pacific Steam Program Manager and Engineer Ed Dickens making some adjustments to 4014's air compressor to get the locomotive ready for Saturday morning's excursion. Number 4014 was built by the American Locomotive Company at their premier works in Schenectady, New York in November 1941 as number 15 out of 25 big boy locomotives that were built exclusively for the Union Pacific from 1941 to 1944 and were officially referred to as the 4000 class. Originally, the locomotives were going to be called the Wasatch type after the mountain range in northern Utah that bears the same name. But when number 4000, the first locomotive, was being prepared at the factory to be shipped to the Union Pacific for its official delivery, one of the employees at Alco took a piece of chalk and wrote Big Boy across the smoke box on number 4000. And everyone liked it so much that the name stuck. Here you can see UP Steam Crew member Paul Gershio doing some work on 4014's running gear to help get the locomotive ready for its starring role during the two-day excursion over Cajon Pass between West Colton and Barstow. After making its final run in the early morning hours on July 21, 1959, 4014 spent two years in storage in Cheyenne, Wyoming before the railroad finally retired it from the active roster in the fall of 1961. Shortly afterwards, it was donated to the Southern California chapter of the Railway and Locomotive Historical Society and arrived at the chapter's museum at the Los Angeles County Fairgrounds in Pomona on January 8, 1962. Early on Saturday morning, I'm out at West Colton Yard with the rest of the Rail Giants members who will be serving as the volunteer staff on board the train for the next two days. Here we can see Fireman Austin Barker putting his uh, identification tag on the blue safety flag that is mounted under 4014's cap. This blue flag is part of a lockout tagout safety procedure. When the blue flag is out, that indicates that the equipment the flag is on cannot be moved until the flag has been removed. And the blue safety flag itself cannot be removed until after each employee working on the locomotive removes his identification key from the flag. If you take a close look at the tender next to the gangway leading into the cab, you can see the brand new commemorative plaque that was recently installed by the steam crew during 4014's brief layover in Provo, Utah, just a few days earlier in the trip. This commemorative plaque was installed by the crew to commemorate the years number 4014 spent on display at the fairgrounds in Pomona. Let's climb on board the train for the start of this historic two-day trip to Barstow. Doubt that. Go be to the back of the train. Yes. <laughs> Twenty three car train. This is even longer than what they had on the previous two public trips. Uh huh. To go, oh, we're going through a curve. Yeah. yeah, this is where we turn to make the entry onto the Palm Hill cutoff.
Now that everybody knows the train is leaving, yeah. How many people get to say they can do this?
few miles up the line, 4014 crosses the Long Steel Bridge across Lytle Creek and then crosses the 210 freeway. This is the site of the infamous wreck of SP-7551, which took place on May 12, 1989. Going through the curve of Blue Cut, though. Sullivan's? Not yet. Uh, We're still about a mile away from Sullivan's curve. A good distance farther up the line, 4014 encounters the steep 2.2% grades of Cajon Pass as the train passes Blue Cut. Just down at the bottom of the hill is the BNSF Transcontinental Main Line linking Chicago with Los Angeles and the dry stream bed known as Cajon Creek just off to the right. Let's take a moment to step off the train and watch this trackside view of the train climbing uphill near the same location on its way to Barstow.
A few miles farther up the line, the train passes Canyon Siding as it tackles the steep grade of Sullivan's Curve while making its way up Cajon Pass. This location has long been a favorite spot with rail fan photographers. is up ahead next. I told them, I told the guys in the back. The train crosses Highway 138 as it passes another well-known location known as Mormon Rocks. Probably going to move around the curve. Oh yeah. Ted and Kurt, yeah, they already came through. Oh, shoot, I just missed my shot. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. How are we, by the way? Huh? Oh, yeah. Snooze, you uh, lose. You're kind of slow to nothing, huh? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much more, more busy. Holy smoke, there's like triple, quadruple.
After a brief 30-minute servicing stop in Victorville, 4014 is seen picking up speed as the train accelerates out of town while passing the small community of Oro Grande. Part 2 of this video will cover the return trip from Barstow back to Colton on Sunday, as well as the chase on Tuesday, October 15th from Colton to Indio.